Hello, some strong nation, Joe Simons. Like diamonds, man, kill me. I mean, you guys can hear my throat, but Nick said I sound like Barry Manilow. Got a throat drop in. Allergy time, October. Who else has it? It is killing me. I had that post nasal stuff, and now I'm just to the point that I feel good. I feel like I got laryngitis. So I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit different. But <laughs> We had to do this because this is too good to not share this. This is something we've been working on behind the scenes for a long time. It is a combination of basically a fishing forecast tailored for inshore fishermen. We have radar, we have weather, we have wind, we have sonar, like we actually have sonar with Navionics. We are showing um, satellite maps, radar. I mean, you get to see the storms coming. It's everything we wish existed. Like we used to have to go to, what, four different apps on our phone. And now we've built all this into one, including our proprietary strike score, strike score technology. So we're so pumped to show this to you. Uh, Luke's going to be able to pull up his screen in a little bit. So let me introduce Lukey. You there? I'm here, so I'm pumped. Yes, yeah, uh, like, like Joe said, yeah, this is something that I used to have to toggle through multiple apps or multiple websites to pull. Now it's in one spot, super simple. And we have Nick Pavoni, our developer. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be an awesome project. I mean, rolling it out, it's gonna be, uh, a lot. I think a lot of people are gonna benefit from this. You've put a lot of uh, hours into this, my friend. I have, yeah. It's. Uh, uh, you know, as a fisherman myself, it's great just having everything in one spot, just testing it and stuff. It's, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's one thing we've loved about Nick. It's tough to find high-end developers, you know, who have done this for 15 to 20 years and, and know how to code and build sites from completely from scratch and, and are, are able to understand what we're talking about and the fish lingo and what we want as fishermen. So this thing, it's truly awesome. And I uh, kind of give the backstory. So it came about because a few of our members, a few of our insider members, and if you're not an insider member, what the heck are you waiting on right now? Come on, we're giving away our best spots, our best tips, new courses, new mini courses going out every single month. It's amazing. But a lot of members said, hey, like, could you guys solve this problem? And it's the fact I have to go to, a lot of guys go to iTides, including me, I have the iTides app. So they're going there for the app. They have Navionics, you know, on their phone or their desktop or, or tablet as well. And then they're going to another place for radar. So I use some radar app. Um, I don't even know what it is here. I'll try to find it. Radar now, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and, and, and all of a sudden, like you're into three, if not four different apps you're having to go to to get all this stuff. I'm like, well, hey, could you make something that has it all in one place? And we thought about it. And we're like, yeah, I guess we could. And, and we went and checked out the competition. And, you know, a, a great site out there, uh, I, I want to just bring them up because it's a great site. And a lot of you probably use it as Tides for Fishing. Now, Tides for Fishing has a lot of stuff. They have the weather, they have the wind direction, they have a lot of the stuff that we're doing. They don't have some of the, they definitely don't have the strike score because that's uh, completely ours, which tells you which day to go fishing and the ideal time of day to go fishing. But they do have a lot of good stuff, but it's like way overkill. Like you have to be, you have to truly be a scientist or an engineer nerd to like love tides for fishing. Like I keep scrolling. I was like, man, I don't even know what I just read. I feel like I was in biology class again and it was just overkill. And I think most of us, we just want a simple answer, right? We want to know what the weather's like. We want to know if there are storms and if they are, which way they're moving, right? We want to know the wind direction and we want to know, is this going to be a good time to fish or not? And that's what we've solved all in one place. And then, of course, uh, down below on the Smart Fishing Tides, this is our, our solution called Smart Fishing Tides, which is super, super simple. You can actually go in either on sonar using avionics or just on a normal satellite map. We have a satellite map built in with Google, just Google Maps, and you can go start dissecting your spots and looking exactly where you want to fish. And then of course, tie it in with our proprietary strike score technology. And if you guys don't know what that is, Luke, you want to pull that up real quick? Uh, we can hammer that before we go into smart me, fishing tides. Let me get that thing up real quick. But here, here's how that came about while Luke's pulling up the strike score. Oh, Luke's pulling up his calendar now. Oh boy. Oh, everyone's seeing how embarrassing he is. There's nothing on there. Oh my gosh. What are you sleeping all day or fishing? Hopefully. I don't know why I did that one. There That's we are. Funny. Now, uh, now we've got it. All right. So this strike score technology, you can see it here in the calendar. 
this came about for another reason. People said, hey, like, can you guys just like do some kind of formula that's, that's custom for redfish and speckled trout and snook and flounder and black drum mangrove snapper, just all of our favorite inshore species and basically build out some type of proprietary formula that tells me how good, this is a forecast, how good the bite should be for the next 10 to 14 days. And we did it. We have spent a lot of money on this. We tested it out like crazy. And Luke's got a really cool story he's going to share about him testing it out recently. And it actually spits out and it gets better. It changes every hour, by the way, too. This is not just something that's guessing. It's like changing every hour. It's just dialing it in closer and closer and closer as you get to it to tell you how good the bite should be from one, meaning probably don't go fishing. Um, that usually means like a hurricane's coming or, or, or you're in the middle of a hurricane or something that's completely horrible or all the way to a 10 and a 10 basically says, take the day off and, and go fishing. This is going to be an incredible bite based on all the variables out there from the weather and the wind and the barometric pressure, and everything you could possibly imagine all thrown into a proprietary formula that is once again, only for those inshore species. There are some other you know, we call them forecast tools out there that are just kind of generic and like for overall fishing. And most of them are, they're just bland and they're just kind of like some basic formula. But this one is only for inshore species. So it's not going to help with bass. It's not going to help if you're going marlin fishing. But if you want to catch more redfish and speckled trout and snook and flounder, this thing is awesome. And we have countless testimonials from anglers who have been, uh, been using it. So uh, Luke, you got that up now? You're Yeah, can you see it? Yep. And by the way, if you guys are listening to the podcast, we, we are doing uh, this, which is why I was making fun of Luke's calendar. We are recording this as well. And we'll have that on, uh, on YouTube and it can all be found either on our YouTube channel or on saltstrong.com forward slash podcast. Yeah. So right now we're at the homepage and uh, just for those who aren't watching. So it basically just shows a, a quick summary and the, the, the toughest thing about a lot of these tied apps, I've used a ton of them at tied apps and websites is just finding a, a local finding a, a tide station that's near whichever area that I'm going to. I do. I love traveling new places. I've gone all around and, and just being able to quickly and easily find a tide station was a really big deal. And Nick did an incredible job on making that super easy. And you can just see there's, there's two, two steps, right? Find a tide station. Then we have an interactive map where you can zoom in, zoom out, you can pan, you can just go and see on a geographical map, exactly you know where these these the different tide stations are and then to see the data i'll just click on spash inlet nick, nick how many how many total tide stations nick uh we've got over ten thousand tide stations oh snap <laughs> yeah and just to yeah. see uh yeah we can just zoom out i'll uh, i'll go back to that that home page so you can zoom out you can see all all around florida obviously all around the entire southeast clearly and then all over california and this is literally all around uh, all around America, United States of America. We yeah, all the way up to Alaska. A tide station near you. And so now let me just go back down to where I was. So we'll pick Sebastian Inlet, one of my favorite old stomping grounds. And, uh, and this is where, so this is the page where everything is. So there's one page, has everything. All you can do is scroll down. And so it starts out with the strike score calendar. And this is a 14-day uh, forecast of the of what the bite is most likely going to be based on the tides, based on the season, based on the wind speed, the wind direction, the barometric pressure. We really put all the all the core factors, and and they're weighted appropriately based on season. So the formula behind this it changes throughout the season to make sure that the right things are prioritized. Um, so really really cool, and obviously we're we're continually testing it to make sure it's as accurate as possible. And so like, here's a good example. Scroll back up there, Luke. So for those of you listening, I'll just tell you what it is. So this coming weekend, which is Saturday, we have an 8.3 strike score in this area. This is going to change for every pin that you drop wherever you are. So an 8.3 strike score, which is getting close to 10. That's like if you're anywhere in that 8 to 9 or 10, 10 is almost impossible. But if you're anywhere there, like that means the bite is going to be hot. And the following Saturday is only a 6. So if your spouse gave you the day off or said, hey, you can take one Saturday off for the next couple of weeks, you get to pick it, this takes all the guesswork out. That's, what this, that's why we spent so much time in this. It takes all the guesswork out and say, honey, I'm going this coming Saturday. I got an 8.3. And I'm telling you, it has been crazy how accurate this, is, this has been. And of course, as Insider members, 
this part's cool. We can tell you what day is going to be best, but as InSize members, we tell you why and where to fish with our custom fishing reports and all the stuff that we're putting out literally every single day. So we solve everything for you, but this is a, a great head start. And for you Insider members who are wondering, you because you know this has been proprietary just a member so far, uh, we are going to keep this public just as kind of a teaser for a little while. And then we're eventually going to start taking stuff away and probably only have the strike score for a couple of days. So if you're not an insider, you're going to see some of this uh, go away uh, just to put that out there. One more reason to join the, uh, the insider club to have 14 day forecast to know exactly what the bite is going to be. Yeah. So just to, and just to see what's going on here. So again, everything's in one spot. So I'm on the current day. I can look down to see the tide chart. And what's really cool is it, it overlays the weather by hour. So you can see what the wind speed is, what the wind direction is, and how it's going to change throughout the day. Obviously, you can see the cloud cover if there's going to be rain or, or sun or clouds. Um, again, all from one, from one screen, which is, which is awesome. This I, is, love the, I love the hourly, too. And this works on yeah. mobile as well, right? Yeah, Jim, yeah it's yeah. really helpful when you're looking at the tide. Like if you're going to be fishing like the first part of the outgoing tide, you can immediately look up and see – the wind speed and if it's going to be rainy at that time. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and this is the desktop view, but all of this is, is, is viewable mobile as well. This is mobile tablet. It's all can be viewed. All this information can be gathered from either any device that can access the internet. I'm not sure about an Apple watch, but uh, all the normal. <laughs> and so scroll down a little bit further and you get the hourly, the hourly feeding projections. Again, this is similar to the strike score by day, but this, this is again, breaks out. The, the times that are most likely going to have the best bite, again, based on the, the, the season, the wind speed, the wind direction, the, you know, the pressure changes, and obviously the tide cycle, of course, is a very big driver. Yeah, I think it's an aggregate of 11 or 12 different APIs into yeah. one spot. And, and it's looking at trending information, too. So it's actually looking back and, and seeing how things are changing and, and not, not so much just the, the static, a static number. It's, it's how things are changing. It's the trending, which is – which is the thing I did wrong for many years. I was looking at absolutes. I was looking at like an absolute temperature when I should have been looking at a relative temperature. Is it warming or is it cooling? That is way more important than an, than an absolute. And so the cool thing uh, Joe mentioned before is say the Saturday, right? You have one day off to go fishing. And I, as Saturday is the, the day with the highest strike score. All I have to do, if I want to see the, the hourly projection, all I do is click on that, on that Saturday, on that calendar. And then everything on this page change updates to the Saturday forecast, right? So now we can just quickly scroll down, see the tides for that day, to see the, the latest weather projections for that day. And this is like, what was it, Nick, 15 minutes new? Is that right? Yep. And update every 15 minutes? Yeah, about every 15 minutes. And then uh, scroll down and, right, we can see the hourly, you know, although this is five days out or whatever it is, now we can actually see the hourly feeding level projections. So now you can just quickly look at this graph and know, okay, great, I can, I can fish this day. It's rare, uh, at least for me, it's very rare that I can fish the entire day. So now you can quickly look at this graph, okay, I'm gonna take the morning off, I'm gonna go fish the morning, or I'm gonna fish the, the evening, or somewhere in between. This is so awesome, again, guys. We've literally taken the guesswork out. And, and as Luke said, you can go out in the future and see all of this stuff. And for those of you listening, it's just basically green bars. So we even have a color uh, coordinated where if you see green, that means that is your prime time to fish per hour. Yep. So you got the day out to 14 days and now you have it broken out by hour. We are completely taking all of the guesswork out to try to make this as easy as possible for you guys to go up there and catch inshore slams. That's the whole goal of, of all this stuff. And uh, yeah, Nick is absolutely uh, killed it on here. Yeah, and a cool thing too is and this is different than a lot of other um, some of the other tide forecasts or tide station tide data gatherers. They do give some uh, some some kind of like feeding times that that are, are going to be better or worse. And they'll but they'll just have like a couple of little fish or something, just kind of like every once in a while, like every other day. And and the cool thing here is that you know in reality, right? There's there's going to be some fish that that's hungry any day throughout the entire day, right? So it's, it's, it's very rare that you can literally not catch anything. And so what, what this hourly feeding does is it, it, uh, it, it shows that, okay, you can actually have some success at any time throughout the day, but hey, these hours in particular have a little bit higher chance. And you can just see how, how that fluctuates 
on a relative basis throughout the day. So again, uh, for me, I rarely fish can fish more than like three or four hours. And so I just love it where I can just quickly look on here. Okay. What, what three hour, what three to four hour span has the highest projected, uh, you know, feeding, feeding score. And that's the time I go. And by the way, we, we did a live training uh, on this to, to some of our, our members. And one of the big questions that came up, and maybe you're wondering this, is, hey, can you guys tell me what are the 11 or 12 APIs? Like, basically, what's the secret sauce to predict all this stuff? And the answer is no. Ironically, the KFC recipe that's been under lock for like 80-something years has got, I think, 12 ingredients, too. Uh, same with Coca-Cola. It's like under like one of the most secret formulas of all time. This is just like that. It's under lock. Only a couple people know it. Well, we all have different keys, you know, to get to the safe where it's all kept. So, no, we cannot share that. Uh, we don't want anyone knocking this off because we put a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of time testing it out to make sure it's right. And we're constantly tweaking it as, uh, as well. Uh, and the coolest part, as Luke mentioned, it was every 15 minutes or in worst case an hour, all this stuff is updating. So it's not like just some guess. I mean, this is like using technology to create shortcuts. For you to go out there and catch more fish. So we got all this tech stuff coming into one place to pump out exactly what day and when you should go fishing to maximize your strikes. And this awesome. I love this thing. I, w I wish this existed years ago. It just, it, it simplifies everything. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so what we see now, this is more on the kind of like the forecasts. Okay. Let me just plan my trip. Uh, whether it's, you know, t today or tomorrow or within 14 days, you know, all this data is available. And then uh, as far as the, okay, once I plan the trip and once I'm about to go, a thing that I always do and I recommend everybody do just for safety is to get on a radar and know, first of all, what storms are in the area. Number two, which direction they're going. So just a static radar is, is helpful. You can see what's there, but it's super important to be able to know exactly which which direction the, the storms are going and so we included that in this map where i just click the the play in motion this is a two hour loop so you can see this is let me zoom out so you can see a bigger oh, storm there it is yeah go up a little bit this there is huge go. say yeah. goodbye to my radar app i don't need that sucker anymore yeah so I, awesome. i've always used weather.com which is which is or the weather app the weather channel app and um uh, and it is you know it is pretty good but there's always like a long delay there's a long first of all I have to open it up and you know, listen to freaking three minutes of ads and all the other crap. Yeah. You'll notice if you're watching this on YouTube, there are zero ads and we're going to keep, that's going to be one big thing different than tides for fishing and all these other great sites. They're all ad driven. This is something we're just offering for free. We are going to keep ads off of this just to give you Intel as quick as possible without having to sift through a 30 second or even a minute long video that drives me crazy on the, on all these sites. Yeah. And, and uh, I, had a, I had a rant there. Yeah, more importantly um, is the fact that the radar, it's, it's just, it's, it's simple. We're not taking up a lot of bandwidth. Like I'm right now, I'm, I'm outside. I'm the, I'm, a, I have a Wi-Fi going through a couple walls. I can hear birds still, back there too, by the way. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a guy mowing his lure, it goes long. So sorry if it's uh, a noise in the background. But, uh, but it, long story short, this is, this will definitely work on the water, on a phone. I've tried it and it, uh, it is just really helpful to see the, the map in motion. And one cool feature too is when you stop motion, you can see where the lightning is. And then this is something new that I've just been experimenting with. It actually shows the, the projection of the storm. So for those who are watching, you can kind of see, uh, if you look closely, you can see a little cone. Oh, it's got a cone. It's a hurricane. Run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a hurricane cone, but it'll just, it'll just uh, isolate some of the, the different parts of storms. And, and then it'll, it'll show a cone on where it's going to be going. Dude, that's so that sick. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, so if you're thinking about fishing in an area that's in that cone, then you know it's probably an idea to kind of wait for a little bit. At least so it'll pass us. Huge, a huge safety thing. So look, can you zoom in and show those little – it might be tough for some people. to. Can you see those little Zs, the lightning Zs? Oh, yes. yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, so zoom in the area with a bunch of red and yellow. You can see the lightning bolts. And, then you can, again, you can see the different storm cells within that storm. It, it'll have the – all the cones are going in the same direction. So once you, once you kind of know the direction – you have it but again super super important i didn't do this for many years i got stuck in a, in a lot of lightning storms and had some close calls with that stuff and so highly recommend if you whether you use this or not use some sort of tool to uh to get an idea and to get to get an understanding of which way these clouds are going those clouds 
aren't always going the direction of the wind on the ground. Uh, that's a big misconception out there. So yep. be very, very careful about that. Especially those fishing around Florida in the summertime. Yep. Um, so on top of that, uh, or right, I said right below that, in addition to the radar, you scroll down just a, another screen level, and now you have a satellite map. And so it defaults to whichever tide station area that you're looking at. So I was looking at Sebastian, so Sebastian is right in the middle. If I wanted to go and, uh, and see, you know, just see what the bottom contours look like if you're in an area uh, like what Sebastian is with pretty clear water, you can go down and get to the, like a real low level and, and see you know, different cuts. You can see the seagrass on the bottom, you can see where the channels are. Super, super helpful, you can, you can zoom and pan around. Um, and then what's really cool, let me just move, I have a little, thing over the thing and so if you look over on the right now that I've cleared my screen is this little this is like what, what Google Maps have if you're on Google Maps which I love one of my favorite features is this little this little guy it's uh it's to see the street view and so if I wanted to see okay um you know what is what is right here on the, on the road actually look like you just hit that and bam you can see exactly what's happening on the street you can see, okay, there is a gate on Sebastian, you know, and you can zoom in, even read signs. This is like really, really remarkable. So you can do all of this again from in this one place, actual tide station. And to, and to get out of there, you just click this box and you're ready to go. But what's interesting is, yeah, check that. I've never I actually didn't know this is possible. So to see, to know where you can do the street view, you just kind of move this guy around. And if there's a blue, a, a little blue section, you just drop it and, uh, I did not realize this is even possible. So they actually have this on the beach now. Pretty amazing. Look at that. You can see the guys walking on the beach. Look at I did not know this was possible. Hey, that's actually me. <laughs> Nick, well done. Nick, yeah, Nick's been busy. He's been... Uh, I've been walking like crazy. Well, all so, this, like, so we can literally walk down the beach. I did not know this is even possible. So I want to see how close I can get to the jetty. Apparently, this is only possible on smartfishingtides.com. Yeah, yeah. Not even Google has this. So Yeah, so check this out. So if I, if I wanted to go beach fishing, obviously any sort of, of anomaly or difference on the, on the ground is a good, good type of place to look for, for fish, where fish will congregate. And check, you can actually see this little, this little uh, creek, a uh, little, little small river going out into the ocean. Pretty stinking awesome. Did, did you guys know that was possible? I did not. I, I, this is the first time I'm seeing this. That looked like a pretty good spot, man. Um, I mean, not too well, far. You, this, can go, you can go all the way out to the pier. You can go on the jetty. So, guys, if you're listening to this, we are on smartfishingtides.com. That is the website. Check that and We out. have our satellite map from Google on there, and we're dropping that little yellow dude <laughs> on the right-hand <laughs> side over. This is impossible. So it's if like you a want street to, view for the beach. Yeah, so this yep. is literally street. Uh, we call, I guess this is pier view, and, uh, and then we're about to go to beach view once we get a – that is amazing. Anyhow, so long story short, uh, this is a, an awesome map. It's not just a, kind of a bland satellite map. It's a lot of interactivity. Hey, Luke, uh, one more thing I wanted to point out. Uh, okay. Zoom back in on that spot. Once you zoom in, notice on the right there's a different icon that shows up. See that, uh, that one with the, the arrow kind of in a circle? Yep. Click that, and it's actually going to spin, so you can get different perspectives on oh, the cool. the satellite that you're viewing. And it really works mm. well when you're zoomed in on like some mangroves and stuff. You can see yeah, how so, they're in. And so check that out. Yeah, you can basically look under the bridge, right? So once you zoom in, it it goes from directly above to a little bit of an angle. I see a flounder <laughs> down there. <laughs> you can see, <laughs> see flounder straight from the map, and so you can literally see under the best pretty. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyhow, this is the 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 best map that I've ever used has been Google. They have thousands of people. I'm, I'm assuming. I think Joe, what was that? Is there literally thousands of people on their? On yeah, their no. Map? Uh, six six thousand people is what I read in one of their prospectus. Um, yeah, just on the Google Maps team alone. I mean, you put that in perspective. That's bigger than most corporations in America. I mean, it's it's massive, and that's just in their maps division. Uh, I mean, they spent hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars putting this and it continues to get better every day guys we can just end this episode right now this is so good we're we're, just, we're discovering stuff about ourselves and about fishing just why we're doing this podcast yeah. and, and, and this by this feature by the way will be will be always be free for everybody right it's the the strike score and the feeding time that's going to be stuff that we do uh, make available only for insider club members uh, you know eventually 
Um, so, any, so anyhow, that's the, that's the map, pretty awesome. So scroll down just another screen level, now we have the sonar map. So this is mm. where Navionics comes into play. Thank you, thank you, Navionics, for uh, letting us do this because I know this is yeah. uh, this is big. I mean, this is this is huge to be able to, to basically have like a free version of Navionics here on SmartFishingTides.com. Yeah. So for areas, or if you're fishing deeper water, like say I wanted to fish Sebastian Inlet, right? I can't see the I can't get a gauge of the bottom contour by the map alone, right? That's just it's just too deep. Everything looks the same. You can kind you can kind of see, but it's just it's just not as good as what an actual an actual sonar map will will unveil so in the sonar map you can see where the actual holes are right you see there's a hole here uh some different you know just different bottom contours and all of these do hold fish i've fished sebastian a lot and not coincidentally these were all pretty good feeding zones right here with the the bottom uh depth is changing and uh and so again with the sonar you can see that and nick anything else i know you had a couple cool things on the sonar i've always just used just this core map isn't there a different look at it uh so. no i think that's it for this version oh, okay. maybe, maybe go show a different uh, different area luke like it's not an inlet yeah you can go back in the creek there or in the bay uh yeah so again this is this is basically let's see what I, yeah we can see so if you're going to go camping at this long point park get a cool camp zone you can zoom in and see where the depths are right you can just just from this you can okay i'm not going to go this this route around this island because it's super shallow Okay, here's where the depth is, right? Here's five feet, here's four feet. Look close, you can see it actually does show the depth. And, uh, and you can just make sure that you navigate safely and, uh, and away from you know, the, shallow, the shallow grass flats, especially. And just find holes. I mean, you could see some of these little, all, all of a sudden it goes from four to sevens. It was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a, a great way. If you see some on the map, just to scroll down a little bit, whether you're on desktop, laptop, mobile tablet whatever and all of a sudden hey look man there is a, a pretty good drop right there there is a depth change yeah and so for, again for those of us who love to travel and love to just look go to new areas and explore around um so as soon as you go past all that you know that's all the information for that particular tide station and now it's okay um that's information do you want to see some some uh, some other you know nearby tide stations and see what the differences are right if i'm trying to decide if i fish sebastian or Miko, uh, or Sebastian Inlet, or Miko, or Sebastian, like around the city. I could just quickly just, again, just tap on the tide station. And now I'm on the specific tide, tide station for um, the specific page for that tide station. You can see the same stuff. So again, we saw before the, the strike score for Sebastian Inlet was 8.3. And I looked at the next tide station, and this one's a 7.8. So this would enable me to say, okay, you know, statistically, the, the inlet will have a little bit better bite based on, again, based on the specific forecast for that given time. So I'll be more prone to fish the bash inlet. So just look at that, look at that rain yeah, and wind, say, and wind at, picking up there, big time. Yeah, and the tide is not as strong. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see the tide, you know, now we're in the river, so we don't have the really big tide swings that we do in the, uh, in the, in the Atlantic. And again, so hey. this, this accounts for it all. So, hey, Luke, also show them how you can page through the next day just underneath the chart, tide chart, see the oh. next and previous day. So you can just yeah. easily just click through and see how the tides start changing. Yeah, so to see, yeah, great point. To see the different days, you can use the, the previous and next day that's right below the chart, or you can go up to the calendar and, uh, and select it there. So we have multiple ways to, to find the information you're looking for. But the, again, the biggest feature is just the fact that it's all in one spot. You know, no longer do you have to to go through and, and weed through and different uh, you know different platforms, whether they're online or on an app. Um, you can have it all in one spot, and uh, it's going to be really cool. Yeah, and, and this is once again, if you're listening or on here, this is all at Smart fishingtides.com and it's all free. As, as I said, we're not going to have any ads. Our, our big mission here at Salt Strong is to help as many fishermen as possible go out there and just catch more fish, have more fun, save time. Obviously, we hope you join us in the club. We're trying to put out so much free stuff where we make it a no-brainer for you to get our very best stuff. And, uh, and we have a whole lot more in store, of course, for our insider members. And that's how our whole company functions and, and how we're able to afford them. This is, as you, anyone who's ever built sites or developed stuff, you know that this costs a lot of money and a lot of time. And that's how we help pay for it all. And, and, and once again, this is just, this is the free stuff. If you think any of our stuff on YouTube or any of the things you read on our blog or things like this is great, 
you should definitely join us in the Insider Club. And now we have 10,000 plus members in there and they're putting up all their fishing reports every single day. There is 30 to sometimes 100 new fishing reports going up. And many of our members are like showing exactly where they are. I mean, they're showing what they caught the fish on. And most importantly, the, the trends, right? Because, yeah, if you join us today, we're going to give you, you know, over 8,000 or it might even be 9,000 spots by now. But spot is only as good as that day or that tide, right? Because fish are moving, spots do not move, right? Spots are static. They're stagnant. Fish are moving every single day based on tides, et cetera. And so that's the big focus of our insider club. And, and we have, uh, we have, I mean, it's mostly weekend warriors, I'd say is the biggest group, but we have some newbies and we even have full-time guides in there. A lot of our guides, it's interesting. They come in Luke, right? Because they're, they've been doing live bait forever. And they're like, man, I just, I, I, I they kind of feel bad. Like, man, I haven't, I haven't used artificial lose them forever because none of my customers do. And I, I want to go out there and, and maximize my time uh, on a quick weekend or a lunch break when I have a day off. And I just go catch a bunch of fish using lures. So we get a lot of guides that come in. A lot of them just want to share. There's a lot of great guys like Jot Owens. We'll give him a shout out. He's a member in uh, North Carolina. And the dude's in there every week just sharing what's working. He just, he just loves teaching and sharing. So it's been really cool to see this uh, community grow and all the friendships built, et cetera. Um, yeah, and so just to you mentioned some newbies. Some newbies do join, and uh, yes, that's true. But they're not newbies for very long because you know. The, oh we, snap! You went some, there. Yeah, it really, it really covers some uh, the the core mechanics. Most importantly, so for those who are new, you know, we do have some courses that cover the the core mechanic. Kind of like going to if you want to do better at the golf game, you need to go to a pro and learn your swing, right? And then learn the proper mechanics and then practice it. So for those who need the mechanics, we have the courses for that. And for those who are experienced, like like the guides who join and, and who love it, are right, they're basically using uh, using the, the daily updates, the daily reports, just to dial in the latest and greatest trends on exactly what's biting and what they're biting on and, and where the fish are positioned. So that's the kind of stuff that that all of us like all of us benefit from. You now now there's there's around ten thousand members, and uh, many of which are posting reports on their trips and, and very helpful reports. And so my, my game, my fishing has, has totally improved simply by just spending like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes just scrolling through the feed before my, before my trip. And I'll be able to see exactly what's biting and, uh, and, and where the fish are positioning. And then I use that on my game plan. And it, is, it has really been, really been awesome uh, to, to, just to get the, the benefit from that. Yep. And Luke, uh, go back to, and that's all at saltstrong.com if you want to learn more about the, uh, the Insider Club. But on the Smart Fishing Challenge, another question that came up when we <coughs> shared this with some of our, our private members is they're like, well, hey, are you guys going to build an app for this? And, and that's actually how this whole thing started. Uh, we actually hired, uh, it was really an intern, and Nick and the intern were working and even trying to outsource some stuff to, to some guys who only work on apps. And all of a sudden, like the cost, we're just going astronomical because you don't know about this with apps I mean, you only have so much real estate, you know, on a phone and everyone's got different size phones. And so you actually have to have like different versions based on, on the size of your phone. Like, you know, the, the iPhone 11 pro is different than the plus. And, and then you have Android and you have old phones. Like my mom's still got an old school iPhone six or seven or something. I don't even know how it works. And that's different. And so, uh, we, we, we just looked at it. I'm like, man, I, I'm not digging the whole app thing. And the other part is, I think a lot of guys like, like my dad, they don't really trust apps, right? There's, you know, there are, you know, quite a few uh, articles and things out there about apps taking a lot of your information without you knowing it, tracking where you are, why, you know, you're, you know, you have your phone on you, which everyone does. And so we decided to go <clears throat> against the app. And, and two, I know when I do pre-trip planning, I'm usually on my laptop or, or a tablet and not my phone, right? It's easier as Luke showed you here in this video to, to do pre-trip planning on a wider screen so you can see more, uh, meaning the pre-trip planning, the stuff that you might do the night before. And so we decided to have uh, a super like crazy mobile friendly apps, like everything that you just saw here today or heard about that is completely mobile friendly on any device you can possibly imagine. Uh, so it's basically still doing the same thing in app, but it's not going to ask for all your information and make you download stuff and have to do all the updates. And of course, if you are like my dad or like us and you like to do pre-trip planning on a desktop, it's there for you as well. So to us, it's the best of, of all worlds, uh, not just both worlds. I mean, literally all worlds. It's tablet friendly, mobile friendly, massive 24 inch uh, 
what do they call the iMac friendly? It's friendly everywhere you can possibly imagine and accessible anywhere there is internet. So um, that's why we did it that way in case you're, you're wondering if there's gonna be an app, probably not, uh, just because of, of all those reasons. Uh, and unless we hear something differently, like you guys can make some crazy suggestion while having an app, app would be better, but for us, I don't, I don't see how that would be possible since this works on every phone. You don't have to go log in or worry about apps crash or any of that stuff. This is always gonna be crazy fast, gonna load quickly, and just be super simple, right? The whole thing here is using technology to create shortcuts to help you go out there and catch more fish. There, we didn't overdo it. We uh, we had a bunch of ideas to add more stuff. Like, man, now now we're kind of like everyone else. Like, most fishermen don't want to see a thousand charts, right? Just like I don't want to go check, you know, four different apps to get the same information. I just want it simple. Like, boom, tell me what the weather is, tell me what the tides are doing, and tell me you know what time and day to go fishing. And that's what we've done. Pretty awesome. So, Nick, dude, yeah. kudos, brother. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I mean, it's also fun testing it out, but. You know, I've got I've got three kids and I don't have a lot of time and, and just looking through all the different sources to figure out if it's a good day. It's great just to pull this up and say, you know what, Saturday looks good. It's going to be early in the morning. Let's just yep. go then. You know, it's great. What I'm hearing is your life got better from smart fishing. It did. Yeah. yeah. Saved a lot of time. Great. More memories. Yeah. And, uh, and one thing, too, on the on the app first website, like the only benefit of an app that, I, that at least that I can think of is just. It's just actually like being on the home screen, right? Like just having the convenience of, of you know, this platform being just like a little tap away. And, and there actually is a way to get, you know, to get a website on your home screen. I can't remember the name of it, Nick. Do you? What's the yeah. So there's two different ways. I mean, right now you can just add it as a favorite to your to your home screen. But then uh, eventually, what we're going to do is make this a progressive web app. And what that does is the first time you pull up the mobile site on your phone, it'll ask you, do you want to save this as a, as a web app on your phone? And then at that point, it'll, it'll li literally act just like a, an application on your phone. Um, but it'll just be the mobile website. So you'll see a little, it'll probably be that icon of the brain of the. Exactly. The, the, it'll be the icon of the smart fishing tides brain. And uh, you click on that and you'll be able to pull it up. You don't have to log in. There's not even a login. You just pull it up and yeah. view all the information you need right there. Yeah, and, and so when, and once you do that, it just takes a little bit. You do it one time, and, and once you do, then there's no updates to have to worry about. You're not going to have to go in there and, uh, and update it every once in a while because all of our updates that we do, we're obviously going to be continually updating it. It'll, exactly. it'll happen on the actual host, and, and so it'll be on our on our hosting platform. And then you, your your icon on your phone will just simply just log in there every time. So exactly. no download needed. Just got to get on your screen that one time. I love it. That is right. And then finally – this is for Nick because I know he, any developer gets nervous anytime that we're pushing because we've already sent it to, you know, some of our private members and, you know, found a little bit of small bugs. Obviously we've been testing this forever, but anytime you take something out, there's always going to be something. So let us know. We, we'd love to hear from you. If there's anything buggy uh, or anything, we guess any other ways we can simplify it, let us know. This is about you, not us. Once again, we're not, we're, we'd lose money on this thing. This is a way for us just to help you out and give you a really cool tool to help you catch more inshore fish and, and some near shore fish, mostly inshore fish. So if anything that you see that we can simplify or make it better or more mobile friendly or more tablet friendly, let us know in a support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, support at fishstrong.com will come to us and, uh, and, and we, once again, we'd love to hear from him. That's the only way this gets better. So for Nick's, uh, to make him just feel better as peace of mind, we're going to call this still in beta testing mode, even though <laughs> it's ready to rock. And, uh, and as soon as we get any other final bugs out, we'll, um, we'll kind of solidify it. And then, uh, you know, eventually take some of the forecast stuff off for the public and only our insider members will get this hourly, uh, out to the into the future because I mean, that's really like cheating. We're almost giving people too much Intel and we want some fish left for everyone else. So. Uh, one hey, and on the flip, yep, I was going to say, and on the flip side of that, if you use it and you find great success, let us know about that too. We love testimonials here. Okay. It makes Nick feel good. <laughs> so I'm multitasking right now. So I'm actually, I'm planning on fishing either tomorrow or Friday in Casita. And wow. tomorrow is a 5.8, Friday is an 8.8. Oh, snap. Nice. But um, I think tomorrow is going to be the more convenient day. So I'll probably still go. So even though, you know, I know that Friday is going to be a little bit better, I can still at least see the hourly projection that uh, the morning bite, I'm going to try to get out there in the morning or if I do do that the evening. 
But uh, anyhow, so uh, again, this is just super easy way to plan trips. My first time using it. Uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to get into that story of your uh, your first time using it. Yeah, just a fun story. And uh, and I was, you know, part of the Insider Club is I go out at least once a week to, in, in most cases, to an area I've never been to before. That's I just love doing it, first of all. I record my, my pre-trip plan. So I record going through all this information. Is this my first time recording myself going through this platform and planning out my trip? I filmed it the morning before. Uh, the morning before I left, so I had the latest and greatest weather. I saw the tides, and then I just got on this map, and I found – I'm not going to show you where I was. That's reserved for Insider members. And so I went on this map, and I zoomed in, and I found a couple, a couple spots that fit the latest trends that have been reported in the community. And, uh, and I'd never been there before. I took three rods. I didn't take a tackle box. I only had a few hours to fish. And so it was just a fun test to go out with no tackle box. I pre-chose my lures, one topwater one shallow runner, and then one for the deeper water, a jig head on the paddle tail, and, uh, and it went out there and fished. And I caught a trout my first cast on top water. About 15 minutes later, I caught a redfish on top water, and then about two casts after that, I caught a snook on, uh, on a, in a deeper zone. And uh, so my first time ever using it, I had a slam within the first 20 minutes of fishing, and I proceeded to catch like, I think it was seven, seven or eight more reds a few more snook and uh and it was just a great trip literally every single spot that i identified i was talking through you know the specific spots like a couple oyster bars a couple a couple little little cuts and literally every single spot that i mentioned i caught at least one fish there it was uh, it was really cool that's awesome all, all caught on video so i can't i can't fake it so once, once you're an insider uh, you'll see that video and it, it was uh, it's a, it was a fun trip really fun trip it's it's just, you know, what can happen if you, if you put together a proper plan. If you know the trends, first of all, you know the trends to look for, you have a platform like this to, to actually put those trends together and, a, and just to put together a good, a good plan. And then, uh, and then just go out there and fish. And uh, without having live bait, without having to deal with any of that stuff, just three rods, I didn't even deal with the tackle box. And I went out there and had a blast. It was the type of trip that I just didn't think well, was possible years ago, you know, when I was lugging around the cast nets and, and doing live bait only and um and it's, it's 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 pretty it's pretty fun to see how you know the trends and and this a tool like this can really really make for some fun trips it's awesome all at smartfishingtides.com no login or any of that stuff it's all there for free no ads you're not going to see any pop-ups or having to watch a 30 second annoying video uh this is just this is all about you all about you catching more fish and, and saving time uh finally on this podcast another thing that is ad free even though we've had offers some pretty nice offers uh to to sponsor our podcast we have said no we want to keep it ad free and completely unbiased, at least for now. <clears throat> but the one thing we ask, we, we, do, we do want something from you, and that's just to subscribe to the podcast, whether you're on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify, subscribe. And then especially if you're on iTunes, I know I don't think uh, Spotify even has reviews on there right now, but I know Stitcher does. But please, please, please leave a review. It helps us out tremendously. And a way that we can repay you back is if you're still listening to this in the month of either October, November, we are trying to beat Orvis. Right now in the fishing world it, it, uh, of iTunes, Orvis has the most reviews at like 1,100 or something. And we're like close to that 900 range uh, when I saw it the other day. And we're trying to overtake them. If we overtake them, all you have to do is take a screenshot of your review on iTunes or Stitcher, Spotify, wherever. But iTunes is where we're, we're trying to beat Orvis. You email it to us at that fish at saltstrong.com or the support at saltstrong.com. Either one will get to us. And we will be doing a giveaway and picking 10 lucky people to go fishing with us to go offshore fishing trip. And uh, it will be a blast. But we have to beat Orvis. We want to take them down. I love Orvis. Great company. But we're not going to let a bunch of fly guys take us down in the podcast uh, review. <laughs> so we are going to try to beat them. And uh, once again, by the last day of November, to overtake our good old friends there at Orvis in terms of, uh, or in terms of total reviews on 
iTunes. So guys, thank you so much. Please do that right now. At the end of the show, um, go on there, iTunes, subscribe, and leave us a review, preferably five star. Just take a screenshot of it or picture or whatever, and then email it to us. We'll automatically enter you into the giveaway. Even if we don't beat Orvis, which I have a feeling we will, but even if we don't, we're still going to give away a bunch of shirts and hats. So it's a great way just to win some cool stuff as a thank you for helping us boost. And that helps us out get ranked higher in iTunes, which brings on better guests, which just makes our, our lives a whole lot simpler and, and makes this podcast even more powerful. So thank you guys so much. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe there as well. I believe we're close to that 100,000 mark on YouTube. So thank you guys so much. None of this is possible without you. And then give us feedback finally on Smart Fishing Tides, any way that we can improve it and simplify it and make it better. We would love to hear from you. Nick, awesome job, dude. You nailed it. Thanks, guys. Andy, your, awesome. first, your first podcast too, right? It is my first podcast. Ooh. I hope I did a good job. Yeah, and you didn't soil, well, <laughs> soil your pants or anything, right? Like all, <laughs> I feel pretty good. That's great. <laughs> I feel complete now. <laughs> Go cool, guys. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely check it out. It, it is really, it's a really good resource and uh, I can't speak highly enough of it. And it's only going to get better too. We're going to be continually working on it. So, oh yeah. MarkFishingTides.com. Dot com. We be out. See you guys. Peace.